Hello there folks, today we're going to take a look at the game called So Long My World. It's published by Axis Mundi and the designers are Enrico Fincati and Francesco Simeone. Now in this game, this is a psychological horror card game, you are living like your last uh, few hours, maybe a few days, and the world is ending, the humanity is dying, and you must do your own like different weird decisions, psychological decisions, where you want to be good to the end or you want to do bad things and ruin everything because who cares, because the humanity is dying anyway. So that's the game and let's take a look at how the game works. In So Long My World you will play for a certain amount of rounds based, based on the number of players and you will eventually choose the different locations where you go to in order to collect the feelings, the different feelings, in order to play the cards. And the cards will give you points at the end of the game. And whoever has the most points will be the winner of the game. Those cards also have some special abilities. We're gonna go through them in just a moment. Now in this game you have all those different locations. Also there are some variants where you can have some extra locations based on whatever variant you choose. Which, by the way, beautiful pictures. But uh, you will use those different locations in order to get their special abilities and in order to get those feelings that you will distribute during the events. And the event phase is the first phase that occurs. The first player turns over the cards and then they read the flavor text and then they read what happens. Kind of a, there is some, some things which are choices where, for example, it says all players must resolve it and some events are, let's say not reboot right now, and some events are for only one person to choose from. But there are all the different events, for example, the choices, yeah? What should I do? Something happened, then you stop them or you, or you uh, let them go or something like that, and then you choose based on that. Yeah, those different events, for example, the family, yeah? As some may say it is only world, only on illusion. Human bonds are as autumn leaves and so on, so you will read that and then you will read what happens. And now this one shows you how you distribute those different feelings on the different locations. Now let's say I, it's, it's a mid game and there are some feelings on those locations somewhere over here, and maybe it's two over here, or maybe one over here. And the next phase is a choice phase where you will use your choice tokens, location tokens, so those tokens, there are some extra tokens for the extra locations that you use in Varant, but basically you choose one of those locations based on the same picture, and you all choose it at the same time, and then you turn them over and see where somebody went. So for example, the yellow one went there, and maybe the red one went there, and there's another person went somewhere else. Yeah, so you will see where everybody went. And then you have the uh, hindrance phase. So the hindrance phase is basically playing the cards out of the usual playing cards phase. And next one is the vision phase. So we're going to talk about the cards now. So different cards, as you can see on this one over here. So they have the points in the upper corner. So if you play that card down, you get one point for the end of the game and then also there's a cost in feelings so you will use those different tokens you collect in order to cast those cards in order to play those cards and then there are some abilities for example each time I spend the whatever it's called the eye of something then I may gain one feeling of my choice and so on but there are different ones choose another player you may give them a feeling of your choice from your reserve if you do they must give you a feeling of their choice from their reserve or steal a feeling or someone to take take the cards you may renounce the special person person vision token to gain three which basically means that <clears throat> renounce means that you will no longer be able to get to that location and there are the different like special person locations for example over there and there are many different cards some of those cards also have the clock symbol, which means that you can play them during the hindrance phase. And you play them in turn order, and during the hindrance phase you can play only one card with a hindrance symbol, and then you may do something that's on the card. For example, this one says that during this turn the other players can do, drain more than one feeling for any reason. 
and what drain means I'm gonna explain you in a moment so you have those different cards and there are some uh, cards for the beginning as well the the starter cards let them be for now and then you you will also go to the main phase which is the vision phase and then the vision phase first of all if you're in some if you're for example on this location we here you can use this location special ability and for example this location special ability says once you may pay that feeling this is the neutral feeling and gain one positive feeling of your choice so there are negative feelings and positive feelings and the, basically the different resources so you will get those resources or you can discard the card in order to uh, get another card from the deck and so on and there are all those different special abilities you do those and then you can do uh, the different um, different actions and you can choose basically one of the, of the different actions it's all explained on the drain for example, you can take up to two feelings from a vision, so basically collect the two resources, or you can take a resource which is printed on the card, so this is basically the affinity resource. So you can also discard a card, oh sorry, you can also draw a card from the deck in order to get more cards. So you can also get, oh now I remember the, the name, the Eye of Soul. The Eye of Soul can be used in order to defend yourself or get points at the end of the game. For every three of those, you get one point at the end of the game as well. So you can use those, or you can also use these in order to go through the Gestalt deck. And these are the same cards as the usual deck, the Remnant cards, but these are far more powerful and sometimes give you more points. That's basically it, like the, the boosted versions of the usual cards. And you can also play the cards during that phase, play all the different cards. Because at the end of the game, if you have any cards left in your hand, these are the minus points. So you want to use all your cards up, because they will give you plus points at the end of the game. And then eventually you will advance the clock and you will do that over and over again, having the events and locating those different tokens. And there's also the reboot card, which uh, basically is against everyone and then it will shuffle the event deck all together back all together as you can have the same events again in this same game and at the end of the game whoever has the most points will be declared the winner of the game so let's go with the uh, components of the artwork first um so first of all i, I like the uh, i like the arts in this game kinda it's weird it's it's a bit like anime uh, style uh, art. Um, the location cards, they're colorful. I like that. Uh, though the art is a little bit weird. Though those are called the Gestalt cards or whatever. I'm not going to go into that terminology. I don't care about that. But uh, those action cards that you play down, that you have in your hands, uh, they have this kind of a black and white um, art as well and uh, some other things. But there's the graphical design issue. Uh, first of all, those small cards, uh, the action cards you play, the font on them. Um, black, white, red thing. It just doesn't work. They should have done something different. I know they wanted to go with that kind of a gruesome, scary, mm, dark world, but it just doesn't work as well as it should should work. I mean, like maybe, maybe it would have worked in the video game type thing. But in this one, in a card game, it just, I don't know, just doesn't work. Now we go with the components, uh, uh, to, to, to the other components. I mean, there's the tokens, uh, the, the emotions, the feelings, whatever they are. And these are resources, basically. And there are two resources. The, I don't remember the names, the terminology, but there's the uh, black token and the red token. And they're very similar. One is like a bulldog type thing, like a face or something like that. And the other one is like a demon face. And they're very similar to each other, and sometimes you grab the wrong one because you're like, oh, oh no, oh, no this, this is the wrong one, you know. They're so sim they should have caught that during the playtesting, they should have caught that during the uh, production phase, they should have just caught that, they should have, di they should, di like, if you have the dark kind of a theme and kind of a dark graphical design, you need to be really careful so people are still can still dis dis distinguish the different components from each other as easily as possible so that's the thing now the location the circle of tokens i do understand they went with the punch board thing but maybe i want i want it to be a little bit bigger rectangular maybe uh, because uh, sometimes you look at these uh, this location this location i don't know it just 
it doesn't sometimes work as well as it is, should work, you know. So, um, and the rulebook. Uh, the rulebook, it's okay, you can understand how the game works, but it's weird. The setup, uh, the, the, the location of different things in the rulebook, and it's just not written well. That's the thing. So, still, nice art, kind of, the components kind of are immersive uh, regarding the theme, but still not as good as they could have been. So, I give the components and art 3.5 out of 5. Now, let's go to the theme. So, it's a psychological horror game where you are making decisions. And in this game, you are making decisions. You're making decisions where to go, to what location. Although, it's... It's very abstract, just there's no like a lot of theme, but it kind of comes through uh, because uh, there are sometimes those decisions and the flavor text. But eventually, as you start playing, uh, because of the graphical issue as well, but I mean, when you look at those cards, you just look at those what resources do I need? What ability do I get? Does the ability somehow color uh, correlate with, with the uh, flavor text? Yeah, no, um, just just nice ability or something like that. You know, you're kind of playing kind of an abstract card game where you don't really feel that those abilities will kind of uh, help you with the theme. The locations, they're nice, but they're weird. And kind of all, everything is like kind of a dreamy, psychological. It's really hard to grasp this theme as a whole. And it uh, don't the art and components try to help with that and the flavor text try to help with that but maybe trying to do too much terminology trying to do too much flavor text and too much theme takes away from the theme itself while you play the game so i give the theme 3.5 out of 5. now we go to the mechanics the core of the game outsmart i'll guess your opponents try to go to locations where you get the best out of your turn and trying to manipulate the other locations so the other players will not get the best uh, at their turn. So there are different phases. You have this kind of hindrance phase as well, where you can play those action cards before, the action cards with the clock symbol, you can play them before, the basic actions. And this is really cool, but kind of, it can a little bit ruin the game. It can become a little bit too swingy, too random, because outguessing God's smarting your opponents is already a random uh, thing going on in the game. Everything chooses their cards, and 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 at some rounds, in some rounds, you might not get anything or get the resources you don't really need. Because at the beginning of the game, you, you all have the same cards in your hand, but eventually you will draw more cards. And everything depends on the draw, what cards you get. Uh, those cards will tell you what resources you need in order to play them. Some cards are nice abilities. Uh, some cards are really cool abilities, some cards are very situational. And if you draw those cards which are very situational, yes, okay, you can use your action points, uh, basically you can use your actions in order to draw more cards and get more variety so you can have more choices in order to play and kind of uh, build up your engine. But, first of all, you are spending your actions, more actions than the others, if you don't get the right cards. Plus, uh, what you're gonna what you're gonna get is that you're gonna get those minus points towards the end of the game. So because if you have the cards left in your hand at the end of the game, you lose points. Uh, you have to play all those cards. So the more cards you get, the more possibilities to get more points you get. But on the other hand, it's really hard to play some cards because it depends what event comes up, what resources are generated on the locations. Do you get to that location? Do you get to to uh, get all the resources of that location, or or split them? Um, what other player plays? Um, so there's there's a lot to consider, and in this outguess outsmart, I, I like outguessing outsmarting your opponent uh, games. For example, I, I like the Green Forest, I like the Mission Red Planet, but I feel kind of that I have control over my choice, and that player has control over their choice, and so we play the cards. And then, yes, they play something that uh, screws my mm, turn and something like that, or part of my turn. But at least I was maybe a little bit expecting that. In this one, it's really hard to expect anything because random here, random here, random here, random here. 
I like how smart out guessing. I like I like the I like the portion of the game where you can choose the locations. Uh, but resources are scarce in the beginning, and you really want to get going. You really want to start building your engine. You want to get fun. Eventually, at the end of the game, you have like you have quite a few resources. Like we played the game where like we all had a ton of resources eventually, and the resources don't give you any points, anything at the end of the game, and you're like. I don't need those resources because the cards require certain resources. They require like two black, one green. Need to get two black, one green. You and and, and depends on the abilities. So, for example, like you don't really get resources during the game, and you feel unsatisfied. You feel like I want to get the engine going. I want to play those cards, but in order to play those cards, you need some resources. You know, like this card says, you you will start getting more resources during each turn when you have played your, this card. Whatever, you know, just abstracting this thing. But you you have to play this card first in order to get benefit from that card. But you need to get those exact resources. So, and you can kind of manipulate their different actions. But I don't like the restrictive order of different phases. At some point, I feel like I want to do more free roam. So, my list of actions. From this list of actions, I can do three things. That's it. What time? What do I do? That's my choice. For example, I don't know, maybe it will break the game in this one. Uh, for example, location action. Do it. I have to do it first before I do the other actions. But I want, maybe I want to like, I want to go to that location now. I have a choice. So I can do location action. I can also do the card action. I can also take the Eye of Soul. I can also draw one extra card. I can also just get the resource, which is based on that location. And it's the whole mish, mishmash of all those different possibilities. And now I have three action points and I choose from there. I want to get that. I want to get kind of a small sandbox during my turn in order to build my engine. Because this is kind of like an engine building game a little bit. Because you play those cards down, you have those different cards that kind of... Uh, start uh, generating more things for you so eventually it feels like this game is a little bit too tight for what it is because oh the world is ending you can do whatever you want you can do good bad the theme says that but the game restricts you so much and randomizes you so much that it doesn't feel as satisfying but i still like outsmarting out guessing i like quite a few portions of that game so i give it 3.5 out of 5 for the mechanics now we go to the replayability uh replayability i think it's i mean because this is kind of a random game uh, a little bit too random for my days but um in this game i feel like i can play a little bit different each time so don't get me wrong the starting positions are all the same all the time but as you get more cards and you can also add those different variants of so different extra locations uh, the game may differ uh, quite a bit, which is which is nice. I, I like that. So I don't think like the replayability is low. I think the replayability is high. You can explore the game further and further as you play more and more. So I give replayability four out of five. One point because you still start the same all the time. So uh, and uh, the scale, the scale. I think it's good. I, I haven't played solo. Uh, I've played. I played four, played five, I played three. Yes, I haven't played two as well. So, but I, I kind of, uh, I saw some other reviews and saw some other, like a play for something like that. So I, I heard that the two player game is also nice, okay, and uh, the solo game is nice as well. And three, four, five, we, like the less players you have, the more kind of strategic it becomes. The more players you have, the more chaotic it becomes, but kind of in the other ways, so you can manipulate each other more and there's like more stuff going on, which is also fun. So I think that the scale is, is good. Uh, this game scales well uh, through different player counts. It depends what type of game you want to get, that what type of kind of a, you know, the, the more chaotic, less chaotic, more strategic, uh, more tactical, you know, game you want to get. It plays in different player counts. So I give the scale 5 out of 5. And so the total is 19.5 out of 25. And this game gets a bronze uh, medal. So I was very uh, critical uh, doing my mechanics uh, portion of, of, of the game. Review right now. 
but I, I, I still like that there's some portions that I like I like to play the, the cards I like those abilities on the cards you know uh, I like to get them I like to build up my small engine I like that it is kind of tight that you will get the minus points in the, the game I just don't like that it's a bit too tight because sometimes the cards you have in your hand don't benefit you at all and becomes a bit frustrating but I like to outsmart all against opponents I like to think like hmm so these two players are probably gonna go there because they really need those resources probably because they don't have any of them they most likely want to get those resources in order to bury them their uh, choices uh, so I will not fight for that location I'm gonna go to that location but when I go there uh, I realized that they fought the same, that they want to fight over that location and they go to kind of a that location, manipulate with these actions and things and hindrance phase and, and the uh, location powers. So it's, it's still cool, it's still nice, it's still, it's, it still works. It's not a bad game. It just has some problems where eventually I feel like this game might be forgotten uh, and it might have its own niche, it might have its own audience which will love the game but it will not be widespread you know that it could have been for a really cool very different theme nice mechanics so the bronze silver medal 19.5 out of 25 and that's it for this review so thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, we have facebook instagram twitter uh, i might be a little bit um, of the course and not doing that many reviews recently but I'll try to do more videos uh, we try to do more things with Carl together so uh, I'm gonna get back I'm gonna get back eventually and do some really cool stuff so thank you for watching we we'll see you another time bye bye this channel is sponsored by Osprey Games check them out at ospreypublishing.com